Hello everybody, it's Deborah at Attic Lane and I'm here to show you some cards made with the Craftwork Cards Geisha Doll Stamp. Now for the first card I'm going to use the Chinese Lantern and I'm going to use a Distress Oxide Antique Linen. The design is going to be very regular. I haven't measured anything out. I'm just going to go uh, in a regular design to begin with and I'm just going to fill in the gaps with the various stamps from the set. It's a really nice way to use to make sure that you use all of the stamps in a set. So you can see I'm keeping everything very regular and very even and I'm going to change the colour of ink to abandoned coral and I'm going to flip the lantern the other way around. And now I'm going to use some of the other smaller stamps in the set to develop the design. And the blue that you can see there was peacock feathers, again Distress Oxide inks. I'm completing the design by going back to the antique linen colours and the abandoned coral to add butterflies around the outside edge. I want to add some dimension to this card, so I'm going to stamp peacock feathers ink uh, using the larger flower stamp from the set directly onto a piece of white card and I'm going to use my scan and cut to cut out those little flowers. I've also cut out two squares that I'm going to use to mat the design onto and I'm going to colour just around the outside strip in abandoned coral and I'm going to do a slightly larger one and colour around the outside in peacock feathers because I'm going to use those to mat and layer and they're going to pick up the same colours that I've used to create the design. There's only a very very tiny border around each of those layer cards, maybe about two millimetres. Now I'm using foam sticky pads to position the cutout flowers directly into place on my card. I think this will look nicer as a square card so I've scored a line I'm going to cut that and then I'm going to glue the design onto the card base and that will be the card finished. Except it's never quite finished if you've got Nouveau drops around. These are gold Nouveau drops and I'm just going to put them into the centre of each of the flowers. Moving on to card two, I've cut two pieces of card in red and in black and I'm inking using the Versamark ink pad onto the black card and I'm inking up and using the, the tiny little fan stamp. You can't see it until I actually put the gold embossing powder over it and I'm going to heat set this. You can see how beautiful the fans have come out. And now I'm going to take one of the branches and I'm going to do exactly the same but onto the red card and I'm going to use the gold embossing powder again. I'm going to heat that up and then you'll be able to see the beautiful effect. So now I'm going to cut out each of those fans. Um, I'm also going to take off the little holder at the bottom because I'm going to punch a tiny hole using my cropper dial. So they're all prepared and they're all ready and now I've got some black sewing thread um, and I'm going to use one of my stamping blocks to wind that around maybe about 10 or 11 times um, and then I'm going to slide it off the block and I'm going to fit it through the fan to create, I'm not sure what to call it so I'll call it a dangle. So I'm going to fit this through the little hole that I punched using my crop cropper dial for each of these little fans. In the end I think I decided to use only three. So you see you feed one loop through the other loop and then pull it tight and that will secure it to your fan. And then I'll use my scissors and just cut it off to a nice length. I'm using a tiny little spot of glue just to stop the thread from moving. And now I'm adding some foam pad to the back of each of the fans. It's nearly assembly time so I've got a card blank in black, I've got a red cover piece which is slightly smaller than the blank black card base and I'm going to glue that on 
And now I've got a piece of black card, which I'll glue on. This is only for the middle section of the card. Then I'm going to take my gold embossed red piece of card. I'm going to stamp that on the, I'm going to glue that on the top. And then I'm going to position the three little fans. And the card is finished. On to card three. I'm using the butterfly stamp. I thought this was absolutely beautiful and I wanted to have a card that just featured this stamp and really showcased it. And what I'm doing, although it's very difficult to see on camera, is I'm using my clear Versamark ink pad and I'm stamping a square made up of the butterflies. Once I've heat embossed the gold embossing powder that I'm putting on the card now, you'll be able to see the effect. I think it's quite stunning. So now I'm going round and adding more detail to that card. You can only do a section at a time because you don't want to, um, to have your ink dry with, before you've actually put your embossing powder on it. So that's why I've done it in the sections. I think that's stunning. You can leave it like that or I've chosen to add three uh, Starlight Metallic Paints, these are from Imagination Crafts, and I'm using Chartreuse, Cyclamen and Blue. And I'm just going to paint those into the little gaps in the butterfly wings. Now I'm using the Cyclamen to create a border on a, a black based card blank. I only need to go around the extreme outer edge of this card. And I've stuck the top card onto that base with the lovely cyclamen pink border. Onto card four, and I'm going to stamp out some of the geisha dolls. I really like the crisp images that these stamps give you, it's very, very good. And I'm using some Copic markers just to colour in the, the dolls. This is a flesh coloured pen, I think it's called flesh, which is a bit creepy. Um, so just using random colours to colour in the, uh, the outfits and now I'm masking off uh, little sections so that I can add some of the tiny tiny flowers onto the outfits that each of the geisha dolls is wearing and I thought this was genius because in the stamp set those little flowers are perfect for doing this. I'm going to put those to one side and prepare the rest of the card. So to do that I've stamped one geisha girl onto a piece of card three inches deep. The width doesn't matter quite so much. I'm going to cut it out, but you see the little piece at the base? Don't cut that out! You see how it pops up? But it stays in place because we haven't cut the base out. So now I'm going to cut out the piece, the doll that matches that doll, and it's going to be glued on top. I've also scored down the side of the uh, piece of card on either side of the black and white image so that it makes it easier for me to fold the card. Because I want those pieces to fold in on top of each other, I need to take a little bit of the excess off. So they're both trimmed and now it folds flat. I'm going to use some words from another Craftwork Carbs stamp set and I've chosen to stamp Beautiful You. And it's quite sweet, it's like a little hidden message that you can add to the card if you want to. So I'm gluing the card in place so it is complete. And you can it's great because you can fold it flat and so you can send it in the post and then when the recipient gets it they can just pop it up and see the little message. And I'll show you later on different ways to um, colour in the, the background or use the other stamps to colour the background on those cards. And there they all are. 
So I've called that cards 5, 6 and 7. You can have a forest of geisha dolls. And now we can move on to card 8. I've got uh, a, a round aperture in a white card base and I've just used a pencil mark so that I know where I'm putting my design. So I've got a little pencil circle that you probably can't see too well. I've got a piece of re repositionable tape and I've put that across about one third of the bottom of the card. And now I'm using a variety of blues to, um, to shade in the lower part of the card under the um, uh, removable tape which I've just removed and I'm going to put it over the inking that I've already done because that's going to be like a lake so any work that I do on the rest of that card I don't want it to um, to colour in on top of my lake so I'm adding a yellow don't get too hung up on the colours just add yellow, orange, whatever you have to create a sort of a warm sunset I've got some blues that I'm going to colour in the little sky with just to complete my scene And now I've got the two, uh, well, one crane, the crane stamp, and I'm going to stamp it twice, as if I've got cranes flying across my scene. I don't know if they're cranes or herons. The big birds. Looks a bit messy now, but when you take away the masking tape, and then when you put the round aperture over the top of it, it doesn't look so bad. I've cut it down to a square size because I think that fits a little better. I don't want to put too much on the blank card because I think this is an image that should stand alone. So I've just run my Versa Mark ink pad around the outside edge. I'm going to add gold embossing powder and I'm going to heat set that. And I can position my image inside and glue it in place and the card is finished. Moving on to card 9, the last card, and again I'm stamping out one of the geisha dolls and I'm going to colour it in using some uh, colour pencils. I have stamped out some uh, lanterns in black ink but I decided to use Versamark ink and I'm going to emboss them with gold and heat set that. I've put the powder over them just so the ink doesn't dry while I'm working on the doll because I also want to put some gold embossing powder on the doll so I'm going to ink it up with some of the tiny flower stamps as we did in a, an earlier card except that this time I'm going to add gold embossing powder and I'm going to heat set it I realised I hadn't coloured in uh, the little pins that go in either side of the hair so I'm using a red uh, pen to do that with and I'm using a red pencil to colour in the centre of the Chinese lanterns um, but I wanted to give it a lacquered finish so I'm using a Starlight's metallic paint in red um, and when you when you use that over the gold it gives a, a, a lacquered effect to those lanterns which I think is quite appealing. Now this is green bamboo. I've put a piece of removable tape at the bottom of the card because I'm going to add a sentiment there and I don't want colour to go into that part of the card. And I've used the bamboo to go all around the outside edge. This is green tea and I'm taking the branches and I'm just stamping them using the green tea randomly across the top of the card. This is sage and if you use this uh, in addition to the green tea it gives you a better effect of dimension and depth. And this is peony and I'm just adding some of the little flowers from the stamp set randomly throughout the trees, the tree branches. There's our little character, she's cut out and I want her to stand on a little hill. So I'm taking uh, my green ink, I think this is green tea, and I'm just going to add a little hillock that she can stand on. The lanterns are in place. I'm going to add foam to the back of those so that they stand out from the card. I'm using another stamp set from Craftwork Cards to add my greeting. 
and my greeting says sending happy wishes. I'm going to add some foam pads to the back of my little character and position her on the card and the card is finished. Thank you for watching. I'm going to leave you with some close-ups of all the cards and a little music. Enjoy. <laughs>